everybody, my name is Elephants. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. And today we are checking out Bendy and the Dark Revival. Now, I said in a video that came out about it over a year ago, I would play Bendy and Dark Revival when it came out. But there is a reason why I never did. And I will explain that, like I said in my Choo Choo Charles video, why that isn't the case. Because some changes are going to be happening. I just haven't really had the t personal time to begin writing the script for that video and putting my thoughts together because I just haven't had the time. But because of that, I will be reacting to the story explained. It is made by Horror Bro Mike. We love watching his videos explained because I love it when he talks. He explains horror games that I am very interested in. And he goes into great detail. He looks at every little nick and corner. And I like that. So that's what I look for when it comes to horror game explanation videos. Um, but with that being said, this is going to be a long video. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it in three, two, one. And hey I have guys, not checked out anything. Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we return to Joey my first Studios look into as we it. explain the story that unfolds within its inky depths. This is the story of Bendy is and the Dark is Revival a Explained. Dark Revival of Joy True Studios. The year is 1973, exactly 10 years after the tragic events of Bendy and the Ink Machine, also takes where place we ten years later. Henry's never-ending cycle of torment at the hands of his old business partner, Joey Drew. Joey had once oh. run a successful self-named cartoon studio, Joey Drew Studios, from which many famous cartoon characters of the 1930s and 1940s okay, I didn't think from the trailers that if this would take place 10 years later. I only believed it would take place long before any of this happened because Joey Drew wasn't in the trailers. I thought it would take place way before and we would eventually run into Joey, but I guess not. Being created. These included Boris the Wolf, Alice Angel, the Butcher Gang, and of course, that dancing Bendy demon, himself. Bendy himself. As we learned from the story that unfolded in Bendy and the Ink Machine, Joey Drew Studios eventually fell on hard times, and this led to its closure in 1948. However, this bankruptcy the studio faced wasn't simply born from the costs of animating cartoons, but rather from a sinister and inhumane partnership between Joey Drew and the Gent Corporation. Gent? With I don't Gent's remember Gent being... Joey used a new kind of ink known as Thick Ink, which flowed from a device known as the Ink Machine, to secretly trap souls of studio workers and rebirth them as living cartoon mascots. The okay, I don't remember Gent ever being mentioning whenever I've yet watched all the Benny and Ink Machine stuff years ago. This must be something new when it comes to the Dark Revival. It has to be. Oh, this process didn't work as planned, and instead bore out inky monstrosities such as the Goopy Searchers and Barely Human Lost Ones. Other experiments were more successful, such as Boris the Wolf and Two Versions of Alice. Joey's end goal was to open okay. an amusement park that would draw people far and wide with its promise of living cartoon mascots. However, this nightmarish vision was never fully realized. The studio ran out of funds and Joey ended up owing the Gent Corporation an unthinkable amount of money and the doors were eventually closed for good. Okay. The dark secrets of the studio buried from public knowledge forever. Joey ended up as a washed up recluse, vanishing from the public eye and living out his final days in a crummy apartment in downtown New York. However, as we see during the final moments of the original game, he kept hold of the ink machine for reasons unknown. We learn right. that Joey eventually died in 1971, but an old friend of Joey's, business tycoon Nathan Arch, didn't wish to see his legacy fade from the annals of history. Okay. Nathan purchased Joey's entire estate, including everything Bendy related, and planned a grand revival of the franchise at his newly founded animation studio, Archgate Pictures. Oh! My old friend Joey okay. knew the thrills of bringing characters to life. Rest his soul. Maybe with a bit of elbow grease and a small cash investment, I can resurrect the past. The papers are signed, the animation staff is hired, Archgate Pictures is open for business. As of 9 o'clock this morning, Bendy and all his little cartoon friends now belong to me. I'll admit it's strange owning a dear friend's legacy, but I think Joy would be content knowing it's safely in my hands. 
With Archgate okay. Pictures, Nathan Arch planned to bring Joey Drew's cartoon creations to a new audience and so hired a team of animators to help realise this dream. One of these animators was a young girl named Audrey, and it is oh. here on a fateful stormy night that our story begins. Okay, here we go. Okay, Audrey so Joey's gone, and now we play as Audrey. Where does it go wrong, though? Is working late, the last animator in the building as she races to meet a brutal deadline. She heads to the elevator for a much needed cup of coffee, but as she enters, is startled by the studio janitor Wilson. <gasps> Audrey. Wilson? <sighs> you scared me to death. I'm sorry, my dear. Didn't mean to frighten you. You're working late tonight. A pretty girl like you shouldn't be wandering around all by yourself. Mind if I step in? Uh, of course not. Thank you, Audrey. Okay, he was in the trailer. That the I elevator remember. breaks down on the wrong floor, and so Wilson heads into a back room to fix it. Audrey finds herself wandering around an exhibit dedicated to the late Joey Drew. Throughout this historical archive, we see many familiar remnants from the old oh. studio, including the ink machine itself. Though it appears some have been misplaced, as six pedestals are missing. Oh, we gotta do that video. again? While Wilson gets to work fixing up the elevator, he asks Audrey if she can locate and return these relics. These are a record, Bendy Plush, Joey's autobiography, <laughs> an inkwell, a spanner, and a gear. Once all of these items have been retrieved and placed upon their respective plimps, Wilson asks Audrey to flip a switch connected to the ink machine at the back of a room. Upon doing so, the creepy janitor's friendly demeanour transforms into something far more sinister. He grabs Audrey and the two are consumed by the ink oh, now flowing shit. from the machine. Yeah, I knew he was the bad guy in the trailer. I'll show you the truth. This can't be real. And now we die. What why? What is his? Why is he doing this, though? That's the big question. World worn from ink. When Audrey wakes, she is no longer inside the world she once knew. Instead, her surroundings resemble that of a monochromatic living cartoon. An inky message on the wall before her ominously oh no, reads, welcome home. welcome home. But what does this mean? She then realizes that she too has adopted a new inky form, her human appearance now more reminiscent of the cartoon characters she used to draw. As Audrey begins to explore, she discovers- but Why does Wilson do this? It's the big- Big question. Hold on. Okay, I'm wondering why Wilton is doing it, but when I got up and I had to walk away, I, and a thought crossed my mind that maybe he was a former employee at Joey Drew Studios, and he wants to take over or just be in control of this world. At least that, that last part I just made up now, but it seems like a pretty good motivation as to why he would do this. And this is Heavenly Toys. God, I remember this watching this consistently while watching the Chapter 3 Let's Plays. Was that this inky nightmare is a recreation of the long-forgotten Joey Drew Studios, now inhabited by all manner of inky monsters. These include Lost Ones, Searchers, and even terrifying versions of the Butcher Gang, brought to life before her very eyes. She finds many notes and audio logs scattered about the halls of the studio, which explain its dark history. How Joey Drew was a tyrant who worked his employees into the ground. How the studio collaborated with a company known as Gent, and how it faced financial hardship along the way. Oh, there so are the also cartoon notes world that holds. refer to Wilson and speak of him as the man who banished the Ink Demon. Some notes seem more direct, as if purposely guiding Audrey through this inky world. They offer helpful hints and oh, are mysteriously signed Henry. with the handle "Your Best Pal." <laughs> Penry is the only one that ever got the saying best pal. 
<laughs> oh god, here, alright, here we go. It isn't long before Audrey encounters a friendly face amongst the masses of unfriendly ones. A cartoon rendition of the beloved character, Alice Angel. Ugh, what is this horrible place? Yeah, I remember my first day down here. I know, it's scary. But you're actually pretty lucky. The machine could have turned you into a searcher. You mean that, that thing that attacked me? No, that's a piper. And he's part Piper. of a gang, so be careful. Oh, I don't understand uh, butcher gang. This. I can't think. It hurts. You'll catch on pretty quickly, if you can stay alive. Of course, we know this character to be it's called Alice. Allison, and she warns Allison. Audrey of a creature known as the Ink Demon, a monster who still rules over these halls, despite Wilson's claims that he banished him away. Something doesn't quite add up here, as we remember from the story of the previous game that it was Henry Stein, yeah. an old friend of well, Jim last name was Stein. who helped found the studio and create Bendy, who banished the Ink Demon during the final moments of the previous game after playing a film reel titled The End. Okay, maybe after Wilson activated the machine and went back to this time period to corrupt it, he rewrote what happened. And... Well, when he arrived, he must have rewritten it, and Henry's gone now. That seems like it, what it's leaning towards to me. Audrey presses on and makes her way inside the animation wing of the studio, where, with Allison's guidance, she manages to acquire a weapon to defend herself in the form of this gent pipe. Ah, the, the pipe is pipe. lodged in the stomach of a deceased lost one, who has been strung up for following the path of the ink demon. It seems all those drawn to walk with demons are harshly punished as a result, yeah. all at the behest of the mysterious Wilson. Weapon in hand, Audrey can finally fight oh, back female, against the hordes uh, of inky enemies standing in her way. There weren't but any she before. She also discovers she has gained new powers alongside her new form. The ability to sneak upon an enemy and banish them, consuming their life force and transforming it into healing energy. Oh. Audrey is no ordinary trapped soul within this world. She seems to possess a unique connection to it and draw power from her surroundings. Oh. Beware the ink. Beyond the animation alley, Audrey finds a secret room where a familiar face is held prisoner, a living version of Bendy himself in his cute cartoon form. A far cry from the terrifying ink He's demon she's on. heard tales of. Audrey approaches Bendy and extends her hand in friendship but in doing so inadvertently shocks Baby Bendy with her dark powers, causing him to scurry away into the vents. It's okay. See? I'm your friend. I won't hurt you. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> he I cried. Promise. After this encounter with Cartoon Bendy, Audrey finally meets the real terror, the Ink Demon himself, who has evolved far beyond the form Henry oh. encountered ten years earlier. This oh. twisted version of the Ink Demon has a voice, speaking to Audrey as he stalks he her through the he halls of the studio. One? I did not expect him to actually have a voice in this one. So is there a good Bendy and a bad Bendy, or are they both the same person? I let Harbor Mike explain. It, not the voice I would also expect. The Ink Demon has the power to influence those born from the Ink Machine. He learns of a soul's secrets through the Ink and then speaks to them, his voice okay. turning one's mind to madness. Notes found throughout the studio speak of how this demon gives a lost soul purpose. It's a long video. While his words are lies, he has an intoxicating pull, an allure that many cannot resist. It seems the lost souls of Joey Drew Studios all seek out their purpose after being reborn into this inky realm. The reality is far darker. The Ink Demon uses his influence to lead the inhabitants of this world to their deaths, consuming them should they cross his path. Some are then reborn back into the studio in a new inky form, but others are less fortunate, becoming trapped oh. between oh. the real world and the ink world. Ghosts of the machine. Oh, so that's the Audrey hallucinations we start seeing in chapter 4 and 5. By taking refuge in vents and lockers whenever he is near. 
If she fails to reach a suitable hiding spot before the monster locates her, then she is forever consumed. That is only the beginning. Yeesh. Audrey's journey is long and hazardous, and along the way she encounters a few new friends. One such companion is a cheery, if goofy, lost one named Porter. In Porter. return for lending Porter a helping hand, this quirky character bestows a useful new ability upon Audrey by connecting with her through the ink. The power to teleport short distances, which helps for both dodging enemies as oh. well as reaching previously unreachable areas of the studio. There are new okay. enemies abound too. The first of these is the fourth member of the Butcher Gang, previously oh. unknown and with good reason. Her name is Carly, and she is a mischievous ghost who can appear out of thin air, charging down anyone who stands in her oh, way. She, okay, that Carly maybe was jump the design a bit. of an underappreciated artist by the name of Jane Todd, whose fellow artists mocked her creation and dismissed it. Jane then became set on bringing Carly to life, and decided to approach Joey Drew to make this happen. This story echoes the fate of Susie Campbell in the right. previous Bendy game, the original voice actress for Alice Angel, who became obsessed with the character she portrayed on screen and eventually ended up as a research subject for Joey Drew, who trapped her soul within the ink machine and created a twisted version of Alice, whose imperfection led her to become lost in madness as she sought to become perfect. Right. So could it be that Jane Todd ended up as the soul trapped inside Carly? Another experiment of a collaboration between Joey and the Gent Corporation. Maybe, but that's yeah, a theory for like... another video. Yeah. After encountering Carly, Audrey finds her way to the studio elevators. Hoping they will lead her out of the studio and back to the outside world, she steps inside. But her ascent is soon interrupted by a mysterious voice. Keeper. Oh great, here we go, falling down again. The elevator plunges into the deepest depths of the studio, where Audrey finds herself in the lair of yet another new enemy, a giant inky spider known as King Widow. The King, King Widow, Widow is another monstrous creature that has evolved from the ink, and it lays clusters of eggs all around its home at the bottom of the elevator shaft. These eggs hatch out mini Widows, who bite and claw at Audrey as she desperately tries to open the exit and defeat the King Widow. After finally conquering the mighty Arachnid Terror, Audrey makes her way into Yeesh. the nearby sewer system, where she encounters Cartoon Bendy once again. However, after their shocking first encounter, the little fella isn't too trusting and scampers <laughs> off once more. Audrey chases after him, but as she emerges into the sewer system, she is greeted not by Bendy, but instead an unexpected figure from the past. I believe there's something. Oh, it's Joey. Lives. Especially you, Audrey. Who are you? Don't you know me? Take a good look. Joey. Joey Drew? In the flesh. Well, so to speak. Come on up. Let's take a little walk. Is he an ally or is he a foe? The Joey Drew connection. Joey Drew lives on inside the ink machine, now in a cartoon form. He invites Audrey into the safety of his hideout, and on the way, explains a little about how the world inside the ink machine actually works. He claims this inky cartoon realm exists in parallel with the real world outside, though in this realm, oh. time does not pass in a linear fashion. The world inside the ink machine is stuck in an endless cycle, a never-ending loop that repeats over and over. With each time oh. it repeats, the world slowly begins to crumble and wear down. This is why we see messages around the studio stating that the machine, the machine must endure. Must endure. It oh, is also so we're literally inside the machine. We weren't, like, teleported to this realm. We're literally, well, we are, were teleported to this realm, but we're literally inside the machine itself. We're not into some other reality. That is an interesting concept. I don't know if anybody actually spoke about it when the Ink Machine, the first game, came out. God, I remember the de when that game just first came out, the demo. I remember the demo version of that game. <laughs> 2017, holy shit, it's been so long already. So why surroundings seem far more unstable and broken than they did when Henry took his own journey 10 years earlier. 
Joey also explains that someone from the outside world is messing with the one inside the ink machine. This disruption has resulted in the appearance of dark entities emerging from the inky puddles. We know the man responsible for this disruption is Wilson. Yeah. The worst of these creations are the Keepers, who have taken over the nearby Gent workshop. These Keepers have frozen the cycle in place and changed events, which is why Bendy oh. has evolved and the studio become more deadly than ever before. Joey then explains Audrey's purpose. She is here to set things right and break the cycle. You're here for a reason, Audrey. There's always a reason, even when you can't understand it. You made this world. Why can't you fix it? Because I'm not the man. I'm just the memory. Joey fades away, revealing himself to be nothing more than a ghost of the machine, a memory oh. born from the ink within. After this startling revelation, Audrey faces the inky depths of the sewers, where after defeating a high ruling lost one named Lord Amok, she takes the throne in his place. She can't sit on the <laughs> throne for too long though, she has a mission to complete, and so heads up the ladder and surfaces okay. in a train station overlooking a vast city. The City Built of, broken, of dreams. broken Dreams. Here Audrey finally catches up to baby Bendy and manages to win him over with some kind words. I, I didn't mean to hurt you, and I really don't think you want to hurt me either, right? Good. Let's be friends then, okay? What do you say? You and me? <laughs> awesome. Alright, so Maybe it does seem like there's two separate entities. I'm looking for the old gent building. What's wrong? Is it a bad place? It's okay. I won't let anything happen to you. We'll go one step at a time. Just you and me. Let's see what we can find. With their trust issues resolved <laughs> okay. for the time being, Audrey and Bendy head out onto the city street. I'm glad there's a, a good version of Bendy, because we never saw the good version in the original game. We only saw the trailers, the postcards, the images in the game, but we never actually saw the good Bendy. I guess because of now the corrupted version of the inside the ink machine, two separate versions exist. One that wasn't that was corrupted and one that wasn't. This is interesting. Beats and over to the gent workshop that Joey pointed her toward. Unfortunately, their entry is denied and an ID card required. Bendy helps Audrey track down a note written by a gent worker. This note guides them to a rundown hotel where the ID card has been left for safekeeping. As Audrey walks over to collect the card, she is approached by Joey Drew once more, who whisks her away to a familiar location where a memorable voice can be heard. All right, Joey. All right, Joey. I'm here. Henry? I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. Audrey finds oh, herself back in, the original in the area studio. of the studio where Henry first began his own cycle back in 1963. Though it now looks far more ruined, worn down by the many cycles this inky realm has had to endure over the years. Joey prompts Audrey to take a seat before a projector, and here he explains his history with Henry and Audrey's own origins. Oh. Joey had been a bitter man in life. Frustrated that his old business partner Henry Stein left the studio, Joey created the Ink Machine, alongside a version of Henry that he could trap inside its world and torment forevermore, wait, within wait, wait, an wait, endless wait, cycle wait, of wait, misery. Wait, 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 wait. However, so the Henry we played at in the first game isn't the real Henry, just an inky copy of him? But that doesn't make any sense. In the first game, he goes through uh, puddles and puddles of ink, and Alice, Allison, rather, says that inky creatures like such as themselves cannot fall into the ink because they would be lost forever. I'm surprised I can remember most of that line off the top of my head, but that was the rule. And now that they're saying that this Henry that we played as in the first game, in the cycle, isn't real? Uh, that's, that's, that's conflicting. As the years went on, Joey found a guiding light, a voice actress at the studio named Alison Pendle, who took over the role of a character from Susie Campbell, befriended Joey and warmed his icy heart. Inspired by Alison, Joey created a version of her within the ink machine, a new version of Alice Angel that would help Henry on his path and bring him hope within his endless loop. 
After doing so, Joey decided to create something to help him find his own purpose in life, a daughter. This daughter was also born from the ink machine, and her name was Audrey. What? Although the road to creating Joey's perfect daughter was long and many failed experiments occurred along the way, we discover this knowledge in a note located further into the game. These failed versions of Audrey referred to Joey as Uncle, and one can be heard at the end of the original game. Tell me another one, Uncle Joey. Right. You will also notice that the picture drawn by Henry, once found hanging in Joey's apartment, appears on the wall beside Audrey's desk in Holy her office shit. at Archgate Pictures, proving this connection to be genuine. Learning the truth that Joey is her father is too much for Audrey to handle. I'm not listening to any more of your lies. Remember who you are, Audrey. Leave me alone! <sighs> With this revelation, Audrey returns to the present and collects up the ID card, but when she exits Shit. the hotel, Bendy is gone. Audrey heads back to the gent workshop and manages to gain entry, but upon okay. doing so... That revelation... took me for a minute, because I remember in the first game, he never got married, he never did anything else, he just worked in the studio. And Henry didn't, he moved on. I forgot that kid's voice line. It's been so long since I watched the ending of chapter five, so I forgot about the, the kid's voice line and the exact words. But as he was talking, I remembered. Oh, Christ. All right. Um, I really don't know how to put it that way, but how can there be a version in the real world and a version in the ink machine? How can that be? But learns of another worrying revelation. As she makes her way to the front entrance, she is ambushed by the Ink Demon. But, just as he is about to attack, electrical pylons spark to life and transform him into Cartoon Bendy before her very eyes. The Ink Demon and Bendy are one and the same, dual personalities trapped inside oh. one body that can transform in the blink of an eye. A balance of both good and evil, okay, so love never and mind. hatred. Never mind, they aren't separate entities, they're the same person. <laughs> All right. In, in a daze, body. Bendy wanders off into an inky passage in the wall, leaving Audrey to live to fight another day. Alright, let's le learn about the Gent the Corporation. The Gent Workshop holds many dark secrets. It reveals just how twisted the Gent Corporation became in its pursuit of turning people into living cartoon creations via the power of the ink machine. An audio log explains how men from the street, down on their luck and living in poverty, were paid to become part of Gent's research and experimentation. Unbeknownst to these poor souls, this meant Jeez. becoming imprisoned within the confines of a workshop and killed. Their bodies pushed down a chute into a location known as the Pit, where Gent would blend them with the ink and revive them in a new cartoon form, just as Wilson did to Audrey at the beginning of the game. We see bodies right. hidden under sheets throughout this- Wait, so that implies that um, Wilson isn't a member of the Jojo Studios, but probably a member of Gent, one of the last few people that worked there. And he wanted to return to his world to escape the real world. That's what it seems like to me. I hope that's- that's probably the case, actually. This creepy location, remnants of these experiments. While Joey Drew was working with the Gent Corporation, we hear tales of how they took over the studio like a parasite, filling its halls with their staff who were abusive towards the many studio employees toiling away on Joey's cartoons. The Gent Corporation became increasingly music, interested music in Joey's idea free, of bringing cartoons to life, even building a tunnel between his studio and their newly founded workshop in order to better coordinate their experimentation. Accountant Grant Cohen even comments on how he believed Gent was bailing Joey out financially so these inhumane activities could continue amidst his bankruptcy. One scientist named Alan Gray continued to inquire about the ink machine after Joey's passing. The machine, now property of Nathan Arch, had made its way inside the Archgate Pictures building, and Mr. Gray visited on several occasions to keep tabs on it. Even after experiment had halted due to the closure of Joey Drew Studios, it seems gents were thirsty to continue their terrible experiments. After leaving Yeesh. the workshop, Audrey reaches a grand industrial factory, where she finally encounters the creepy keepers that Joey warned her of back in the sewers. Yeesh. 
Yeesh. Wilson and the Keepers. All right, here we go. As Audrey approaches the factory, she is trapped in a room by the Keepers, who appear on a set of giant monitors to interrogate her. When they discover she wishes to speak to Wilson, they deem her hazardous and attempt to kill her with toxic gas. Please let me see her. Hey. Audrey the manages vent. to smash open a duct and quickly escape into the vent system, making her way stealthily inside the factory. The Keepers are mechanical banshees created by Wilson to govern and keep order within this altered version of the Inky Realm. He drew them into reality and gave them life but they have made things much worse. Right. So how did this occur? Yeah, how did this happen? Well, from notes and audio logs picked up around the studio, we learn a little bit more about Wilson's story. Wilson was a worker at Archgate Pictures, who was working on the delivery dock one morning when the ink machine was delivered from Joey Drew Studios. While most of the staff had no idea of the ink machine's purpose, thinking it to simply be a cool looking contraption from Joey Drew Studios past, right. Wilson instantly knew it held many dark secrets. Wilson never fit in around the studio. He was outcast and ignored by his co-workers for his unusual appearance. But Wilson used their cruel judgments to his own advantage. Due to his appearance, he could become anyone, a producer, an artist, or even a lowly janitor, fitting in like a chameleon around the studio. His original role at Archgate <laughs> is unclear, though it is suggested that he may have been an artist himself at one point. Oh. His janitor role gave him access to the Archgate building after hours, and access to every room as it was his duty to clean up the place. Right. And so Wilson secretly conducted his own experiments with the ink machine and that very special ink every night after hours. This led to him finding a way to remould the inky world how he saw fit. This began with the capture of the Ink Demon. Okay. Not where I thought this was going to go. I thought it would. It might have been better if he was actually a former employee of Gent and want to escape this world and go into this one and take over, but I guess that also works too. But I don't think it's as cool. I don't think him being an, a formal artist who got rejected, turned into a janitor, janitor and wanted to get out of the real world like this, it doesn't doesn't seem cool for the story. After Bendy had been imprisoned by the Keepers, Wilson tasked them with terminating him. However, this termination did not work, as Bendy was far too resilient, and so a series of torturous experiments were carried out that inflicted great pain and suffering upon the poor creature. Keepers have administered quarter hourly sessions of physical tortures and surgical invasions to wear With no way Eesh. to destroy the Ink Demon, the Keepers came up with an alternate solution. They created a new inky form for Bendy, one that resembled his cute and mischievous guise from the cartoons. The murderous Ink Demon was placed inside this new form, which seemed to bring out Bendy's good side, especially huh. when shown affection from others. However, the Ink Demon's evil side had grown more vengeful and hateful than ever before as a result of the pain and torture he was put through at Wilson's hand. Oh, he gained so a higher level worse. of intelligence too, evolving over the many cycles to the point where he could finally talk and influence others through the ink. It is So because of what happened, what Wilson did, he got stronger and he got more intelligent than he did in the previous game. Because in the previous game, he hunted like an animal. But in this one, he has coordination and speech patterns that makes him far more deadlier than he was in the first game oh god clear why bendy switches between these two forms but he seems to have a dual personality and depending on his current mood alters between the two almost like an incredible hulk style concept right the electrical pylons seen earlier keep the demon away from wilson's factory and the keepers who tortured him as long as these pylons are active, Wilson can hide away in safety, claiming that he banished the Ink Demon so that other souls lost within this inky world will feel he is protecting them and therefore do his bidding. Though right. it seems many of the studio's inky denizens despise Wilson and fear his influence over their inky habitat. Right. 
After Audrey discovers the truth behind the Keepers and their experiments, she reaches the darkest depths of the factory and a room with the sign Cycle Breakers hanging above. However, she is locked breakers. out of this area and is approached by a childlike lost one who offers to grant her access if she indulges her in a game of hide and seek. Find me and I'll open the door for you. I promise. Look away while I hide and no peeking. <laughs> This lost one is known as Heidi, and she may be one of the failed versions of Audrey that Joey Drew tried to oh. create when using the ink machine to birth a daughter of his own, one of the little girls that referred to him as Uncle Joey. This would explain her childlike voice and mannerisms. Audrey finds Heidi and in return is given a new power, the ability to travel through the inky pipes around the studio with ease. Oh. She is also granted access to the Cycle Breaker Room. This ominous area is full of prison cells, each housing characters familiar to anyone with knowledge of Henry's original journey through the studio. There's no oh my god, the projectionist. projectionist, Sammy Lawrence who celebrated and praised the Ink Demon, and Bertram <sighs> Piedmont, the frustrated Ooh, architect yeah, behind Bendyland. Bertram. Though the cell containing Alice Angel is oddly empty. Wilson feared these characters as they all had major impacts on the previous cycle and therefore the knowledge of how to break it. As Wilson and the Keepers had frozen the cycle in place, they do not wish for it to be tampered with by oh. these cycle breakers. Of course, the one person responsible for resetting the cycle each time is Henry, Henry. and lo and behold, Audrey finds him locked away here too. My name is Henry. Have you been a prisoner long? When the Keepers think you're a threat to their plans, they lock you away. We never saw what Henry looked like in the previous game, so it's satisfying to finally get a design look for him it's finally satisfying forever i'm what they call a cycle breaker once upon a time i knew how to start the cycle over and when that happens everything begins again completely new obviously wilson and the keepers don't want that to happen henry tells audrey that the ink demon is the key to resetting the cycle and restoring the studio to its original form in order to do this, Audrey must complete the same mission as Henry once did, play Bendy oh. a reel of film labelled The End. The film reel is located deep within Wilson's retreat, so Audrey leaves Henry in the confines of his cell and pushes so we on. Can't take Henry it isn't with long us. before she is captured by a keeper and put to sleep. When she wakes, Audrey finds herself on a train heading to Wilson's hideout. Wilson sits before her and explains why he forced Audrey into this world. There's nothing to fear as long as I'm with you. You're safe now. You did this to me. You brought me here. Turned me into this, this thing. This doesn't make sense. I've never done anything to you. Open your eyes and look around you. None of this makes sense. Drawn walls, nightmarish creatures, an ancient studio that died out almost 30 years ago. It's all fiction, utter nonsense. And yet, in here, it exists. Wilson tells us that while the world inside the ink machine is fictitious, anything created within can then be born into reality. This was always Joey's plan, oh. to create living cartoons inside the ink machine and then birth them into reality, a vision he realised in part with the birth of Audrey. Wilson also tells Audrey that he needs to help us save his father's life, and so she agrees to hear him out and follow him into the retreat. Here the Keepers strip her of her weapons and using the electrical pylons subdue her supernatural powers. She then follows Wilson into so his mansion, where person. he introduces her to a mechanical, doll-like figure named Betty. Betty? A quick rest will do you good. Betty will show you to your room. Oh, this She's girl. She's my housekeeper, among other things. You never actually killed the Ink Demon, did you? No, he's too powerful to destroy. So we sealed him away trapped him in a different form, one that was smaller, harmless. Bendy. It was a fitting prison, although he seems to have found a way to free himself. But enough talk. We'll deal with that 
soon enough. There's some nice fresh blankets all laid out for you. You'll be dreaming in no time. <laughs> Funny Wait, enough, the voice soon? I expected. One more thing. If you needed my help, why didn't you just ask? <sighs> Would you have believed me? Come along, oh, okay. and no more dawdling. This way now. Betty is Wilson's housekeeper and shows Audrey to her room. She seems friendly and puts Audrey's mind at ease about Wilson. He seems to look after all those that live here, and this kindness plants seeds of doubt in Audrey's mind. She begins to think that maybe Wilson's intentions are good after all. Betty They're prepares not. a sleeping remedy to help Audrey get some rest, but after drinking the potent concoction, Alice Angel breaks into Audrey's room and kidnaps her. Oh shit. <sighs> She's back. When Audrey wakes up, she is strapped to an electric chair in the North Wing, an off-limits area of Wilson's retreat where nobody dares venture. Alice is throwing a dinner party in Audrey's honour, but her intentions are not heavenly. Instead, no, Alice wishes are. to toy with and torture Audrey, consuming her heart in her continued pursuit to become perfect. But for now, let's have fun. Plenty of time for a bloodbath later. Ooh, how about a game? Let's all play a game of riddles. Riddles? Oh, what a wonderful idea! Audrey is tasked Eesh. with completing a puzzle which involves lining up various animal pictures in the correct order, and then pulling a lever to power up the electric chair. She gains hints as to the correct order from Alice's dinner guests, who are bound to chairs around the table. If Audrey guesses the correct order, then the dinner guests fry. If not, she will cook instead. Oh. After correctly lining up the pictures, the guests are electrocuted, freeing Audrey and sending Alice Angel into a vengeful wrath. She loads oh, we got a fighter again. and proceeds to try and shoot Audrey oh, of course she's got the gun. through the North Wing. Right, I forgot Eventually, the trailer. Eventually, Audrey manages to outflank Alice and knock her from her post on the balcony. The two fall to the floor and begin to fight it out. But just as Audrey seems bested, a cutlass is thrust through Alice's chest and Audrey is saved by a friend from the past. <laughs> Dies the same way. Is it the same Alice? Allison? My yep. Face. Our face. <gasps> Beautiful. Always were. Uh. Is Tom with her? Uh. She literally died the same way she did in the first game. Once again, good Alice intervenes and saves Audrey from evil Alice, just as she did for Henry in the story of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Same way. Because Alice escaped from her cell inside the Cycle Breaker prison, an opportunity reopened for the cycle to continue, which is exactly what Wilson was trying to avoid. Audrey gives a name to good Alice, the title we all know her by, Alison. The machine creates many of the same forms, at least on the outside. On the inside, we're all pretty different. Well, from now on, I'm gonna call you something other than Alice. It just doesn't suit you. Oh, <laughs> what do you have in mind? How about... Allison? It's not bad. Okay, I'll try it out. <laughs> all but right. Only if you can tell me what in heaven's name you're doing in Wilson's retreat. We also learn that Allison felt sorry for Alice and has been trying to look out for her, writing her secret messages to try and bring out the good within her. Right, she felt but it sorry didn't for work. her fallen angel and her misguided mission to become perfect. Alas, the cycle always ends the same way, right. with Alice dying by Allison's hand while protecting the story's protagonist. Allison also brings along a familiar face, Tom, Tom a version of <laughs> Boris with a mechanical arm who acts as her partner in crime. The two promise to assemble an army to fight back against the Ink Demon, while Audrey heads to Wilson's laboratory to hear out his master plan. Okay, close to the end. And so we come to the end of Audrey's adventure as she faces Wilson in his laboratory. 
The journey to the lab is strange to say the least. It appears Wilson has managed to channel colour into this world, running it through a yeah, series of weird. pipes and into the laboratory. Wilson explains that in order to destroy Bendy, they must create a successor to him, an entity even more powerful that can act as a god to rule over this world. To do what? this, Wilson created a character of his own, a sailor character named Ship Ahoy Dudley. However, this character would need a soul, and Wilson has decided that Audrey, with her connection to the machine and powerful abilities, will be the perfect fit. It could work, but it sounds risky. How will we control him? We don't want to repeat Joey's mistake. No, we don't. All of the factors must be perfect. The right design, the right science, and the right soul. What? At last your purpose is revealed, Audrey. Oh, jeez. This is why you're here. With your soul inside him, my creation will live forever. Stay away from me. Wilson also reveals that he is in fact the son of Nathan Arch, explaining what? that he resented his father, who never showed him any kind of love or encouragement, as he didn't live up to the business tycoon's high expectations. Okay, that was the last thing I expected. Him to be the son of this guy? The CEO that's now running the Bendy property? That was the last thing I expected. Oh boy. Wilson grabs Audrey and pulls her towards his splicing machine, but she fights back and manages to push him into the mass of saws and blades, shredding his body to ribbons and oh. entrapping his soul within the Dudley design. In the next room, Audrey locates the ink machine and Yay. powers it up. This brings Shippehoy Dudley to life, Holy who then crap. proceeds to try and kill her. Fighting back, Audrey almost manages to destroy Wilson and his monstrous creation after a long-fought battle to the death, but is grabbed at the last minute. Her legs ripped from her body, she begins to bleed out into an inky puddle uh -oh. on the floor. Just as it seems all is lost, the ink demon attacks Wilson and tears out his throat, managing to make his way into the lab as Audrey had shut down the electrical pylons. He then approaches Audrey as she breathes her last breath and offers her a way to survive by merging with him and becoming a singular entity. Join the dark and give him to Is she going to use her supernatural power to destroy him? Audrey takes Bendy's hand and merges with the Ink Demon, creating the monster Beast Bendy, the final form the demon took when facing off against Henry during his cycle. Joey Drew then materializes before them and tries to reason with Audrey. He tells her to fight the darkness and take control. But before she can, he falls victim to the wrath of the Ink Demon. Yeesh. Oh my god. Seeing her father destroyed before her very eyes awakens something within Audrey, giving her the drive to fight the darkness and take control of her host body. She overpowers Beast Bendy from within and uses oh. him to mow down the inky army of lost ones who follow him. Oh As my god, we control the Bendy? Of the studio, a collection of familiar faces return to help her along the way. Oh my god, that rat Allison, ball. Tom, Porter and even Henry all show up to open up doors and guide Audrey to the projector room, where the film reel, The End, can be played to Beast Bendy, and in doing so, resets the cycle once more. This undoing all of Wilson's corruption and returning things to their original state. We then return to Archgate Pictures, where oh. Audrey is once again in her human form, though she now knows of her cartoon origins, and her body literally bends just like the rubber hose cartoons she used to draw. 
By breaking Wilson's cycle, Audrey has been freed, and now she is able to rule over the world inside the ink, making it a better place for all of the lost souls trapped within. Oh. And in one final <laughs> twist, her merging with the ink demon allowed her to do something miraculous, to bring Cartoon Bendy into the real world alongside her. Oh my god. Separated from his evil side, Bendy finally exists as a force of good, shedding his dark past and finding light within a new friend. Audrey has achieved what her father Joey had always hoped to. She brought a cartoon to life. But as the credits roll, we experience a wrinkle in this happy ending. The Gent what? Corporation, likely led by Alan Gray, steal away the ink machine under the cover of darkness and transport it to their workshop. This hints at a setup for a third game, where Audrey right. and Bendy will have to work together in the real world to stop Gent and save those still trapped within the inky depths of the machine. And with that, we come to the end of this look at the story of Bendy and the Dark Revival. There's many elements of this story still to cover in detail, and plenty of plot points to theorise oh over. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this look at the surface level story and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment- Okay, that went- the ending of that went in a direction I was not anticipating. Bendy becoming an actual character in the real world. All the characters working together in the end. Demon Bendy, I guess being completely obliterated this time around. Well, until the next cycle starts. Wilson's plot finally revealed. Um... The continuation of a cycle, seeing Henry in the flesh for the first time, or in this case, I guess the ink of it. Um, and now we have a setup for a third game, which I kind of heard about being under development one day I w when I was just scrolling through Twitter a few weeks back. And would that actually remind me to check out The Dark Revival, because I know I never did. Um, but other than that... I'm hyped. I'm glad we got a continuation. Because the first game ended so weirdly. I wasn't sure if I liked the ending of the first game. But now that I've also watched the second game and checked out everything from the first game in greater detail, I like both of them. I like them both. Um, but that's where our current story for Bendy and Dark Revival ends. If you guys want me to check out any Bendy the Ink Machine or rather, Benny the Dark Revival music videos, or anything else of that matter, let me know in the comment section, and I will definitely check them out later down the line. But as of right now, that is it, as this is a long video in of itself, and I will see you guys in the next reaction video. Bye-bye.